there's a million excuses I could come up with. What it will boil down to is quitting, even though every fibre in my being is screaming at me to stop. For anyone that's been a long time subscriber of my channel, firstly, thank you. You will know from the tagline and motto of my channel, the value of overcoming a really hard challenge, you will know that I love overcoming really hard challenges. It's literally the motto, I've just said it. So this video you're gonna love because it's mental. This is the David Goggins run four miles every four hours for 48 hours. I have to get up and run four miles every four hours for two days. I had to say that twice. It's so stupid. Okay, guys, so, <laughs> it doesn't reach. So it's 4.59. I need to open the garage. Right, let's do this. This is run number one, four miles. See you in a sec. Now this is a challenge I've been thinking about doing for ages. It's one that I've gone down the rabbit hole on with watching loads of YouTube videos. I've watched other YouTubers do this and they've made it look really easy. So I thought, how hard can this be? The Dunning-Kruger effect. If you don't know what the Dunning-Kruger effect is, Google it. Right, I'm outside, it's exactly five o'clock, so. Let's start running. Let's do this. Okay, this is run number one. Four miles. Easy peasy. This is where I turn an ankle on this uneven terrain. Properly warm day today. It's about 27 degrees. Even though four miles isn't far, I need to take on water. That's run one complete. So I did it in 44 minutes. That was a six minute kilometer pace, which isn't fast by any stretch of the imagination, but I'd be happy if I can do each run in under 45 minutes, that gives me three hours and 15 minutes to recover in between each run. I can live with that because it's, as I say, it's really warm today. I'm really pleased I took my water bladder two liters and I have drunk over a liter, which is good because it means I don't have to spend the next three hours drinking my body weight in water. The other thing as well, on the night runs, I'm obviously gonna come straight back, have a shower and go straight to bed. I might have a quick snack, but nothing major. So I'm not gonna be able to get the water back on. You know, being dehydrated now is just gonna get worse. It's gonna, it's gonna compound the situation. It's gonna make it worse overnight where I'm not drinking when I'm asleep. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna go in and have dinner. We've actually got a curry tonight, <laughs> which had been planned by the girls previously, which I'm not gonna complain about. Curry's my favorite dinner. Um, it's not optimum endurance running food, but it is good. Lots of rice, lots of bread. I might hold back on the madras because I don't wanna be... Uh... So this challenge is mental for several reasons. It's a challenge that I've been wanting to do for ages. I went down the rabbit hole on this. I've been watching David Goggins for what feels like an eternity now. I love a bit of David Goggins. I love the fact that we have David Goggins in this world. He is barking mad. If you're not a fan of David Goggins, then don't worry, this video isn't about him. But if you, if you don't know who David Goggins is, Google his name, he is brilliant. He's a Navy SEAL, American Navy SEAL, and he came up with this challenge challenge, which is to run four miles every four hours for 48 hours straight. So that means get up, run four miles, come back, wait four hours minus the time it's taken you to do that first run and then go again. And then repeat that for two days straight. I mean, that's barking. It sounds, I have about to say it sounds easy. It really doesn't sound easy. As soon as I describe this to anyone that knows me, they just, they just raise their eyebrows. So, yeah, this is gonna be a really good video. I've got my Thames Path running t-shirt on from last year. Funny enough, it never fit me last year, so I never wore it. Um, but uh, it seems apt considering that I'm training for it, which is one of the reasons I'm doing this challenge. Right, so 8.56, less than four minutes until I need to go. And I'm gonna go outside for my second run of this challenge. I'm trying to vary the, the routes that I'm taking. So the route I'm doing now is different to the one that I did four hours ago. It's starting to get dark because it's nine o'clock now. So I'm conscious that I haven't got a lot of light left, but even though it's not pitch black, I don't really want to be running on trails where I can trip and stumble and turn an ankle and get an injury because that'll be it, end of challenge. 
Right, we're going. I've chosen the time, so start at five o'clock, with the second run being nine o'clock, because obviously it's the same time across the two days. The reason for that is that nine o'clock in August is not pitch black. Doing this in winter, that would be a different story. So then the only two runs I actually do at night, or in the pitch black, is the 1am and 5am, and even the 5am, the sun's coming up. So really, the only one I'm doing in pitch pitch darkness is the 1am. This is how I've decided to do it. I decided to start at 5pm on Saturday, 9pm, 1am, 5am, 9am, and then back to 1pm. So that's the 24 hour, I have to do that twice. So that's the 12 runs I have to do over the next two days. Wish me luck. Okay guys, that is four miles. Four miles done in, hang on. Uh, four miles done in 44 minutes. But that's run two done. So that's 10 runs left to go, eight miles complete. The next run is in three hours and 15 minutes, which is the 1 a.m. run. So I'm gonna have a shower, spend some time with the family. I'll see you at 1 a.m. guys. I've got sweat in my eye. I went down the rabbit hole on this challenge and watched several other YouTubers who have tackled this challenge and they make it look really, really easy. Trust me guys, I do not make this look easy. That's a good one. <laughs> it's not smoky. This is a hard challenge that I wanted to overcome. I've got the Thames Path Challenge happening in several weeks. I've got it happening in September and I needed something to kind of train, help me train for that. You know, I can follow a training plan for ultra marathons that says run this distance every day, run this distance next week, run this distance the week after, which is great. But that's not kind of how my brain works. I get really bored of just following the same thing every single day. And I, it's also the reason why a lot of people give up on training, especially when it comes to running, because it's the same repetitive run. But now I'm not the fastest runner in the world. So if you're watching this thinking, oh, how did he, how did he do it? How did he run it really fast? Or no, I didn't. Spoiler, I did not run these runs really fast. Okay, guys, right, it's 1 a.m. Let me show you the weird clock. I'm about to go for my third run. Do you want me to open this? Let's go, right. See you in four miles. Really annoyingly, I've just hit four miles. I misjudged distance. And I am still at least half a mile from home. I'd happily just walk it. But I want to get back to bed. I don't know why my head just disappeared. <clears throat> I just started running and I didn't turn around soon enough. I need to get home. So, so I'm just gonna say a couple of things. So that's run number three done. Um, I made a few mistakes. So I ran too far. I forgot to turn around at two miles. So I ended up doing an extra half a mile. Um, this head torch was annoying me. For some reason that kept spinning down. So I need to fix that. And it was a mistake to wear this. So I wore this because two reasons. Firstly, I thought, well, 1 a.m. it's gonna be a bit chillier, chillier than normal. Yeah, it's not cold at all out there. Middle of August, I'm absolutely melting. I wore it for visibility as well, because I'm running along roads and cars and you know, I wanted to be visible in the dark. I'm gonna get showered. I'm gonna to get to bed and try and get some sleep before I go again at 5 a.m. So on both of the two days, I had to go out and run at 9 p.m. Now, 9 p.m., when you get back, 9.45, 9.50, whatever time it was that I got out of the garage and back in the house, by the time I've had a shower, changed, had something to eat, so then by the time the 1 a.m. run came, I hadn't slept, so then I did the 1 a.m. run, came back, and I went straight to bed. I had a shower, went straight to bed. Time now is 4.59. i got one minute. I'm not gonna take the GoPro for this run. Uh, I just wanna get this run done. I'm starting to see that maybe starting the challenge after doing a full day's work and not probably sleeping all the way up to the first round. So basically not starting the challenge probably now, starting it last night and not having a full night's sleep ahead of it was probably a mistake because I'm starting to feel a bit sleep deprived now. But I'm feeling a bit groggy just because I just woke up. So I'm not letting that get into my head. Anyway, five o'clock, I need to go. <laughs> Opening the garage, let's do this. Not taking the GoPro, I'm just gonna go for the run and get it done. See you at the end. And then when you run, 
you're wired, your brain is incredibly active, your energy levels are high, your heart rates was higher, um, but it just doesn't stop like that. You just don't come down from that really quickly. Even though I've had a shower and I've reset myself, I was still wired, so I was lying in bed. And I think if I was lucky, I would have got an hour, but it's not like deep sleep, it's broken sleep. So that is run, four, done. I'm gonna shower and go to bed. The next one is, when's the next one? Oh, I'm getting brain fog now, I'm proper tired. Next one's 9 a.m., that'll be run number five. I'm pleased I wore this, I'm a bit sweaty now, but the majority of that run I was cold. The temperature has dropped overnight. Okay, good morning guys, um, it is exactly, 9 a.m. I haven't got time for the chit chat. I need to get the garage door open. I need to go. Right, see you on the other side. Okay, right, I've just come back. Um, literally just got outside. I was about to press go. I am fatigued. I've just left the garage in my Crocs. So I've got my Crocs on because I take the shoe, my shoes off in the garage and it means I can walk to the house without standing on stones in the garden. I even contemplated running four miles in my Crocs because I, was, I couldn't be bothered to come back. But I am gonna, I have come back because I'd like to finish this challenge. And if I run in my Crocs, I won't be doing that. My legs just aren't recovering. There's just nowhere near enough time in between runs for any issues that you've got going on. Being muscle fatigue, issues with feet, blisters forming, anything like that. Just isn't time to recover. I don't have any blisters. That's the good thing. Zero blisters. I think I'm an incy wincy bit faster than the last run. Not much, but then again, that can't be hard. Uh, okay, done. It took 45 minutes. It wasn't fast. That's run five done can't complain. It felt all right. I felt okay. It's really warm, really, really warm. So I'm trying to drink as much as I can out of the bladder. Um, yeah, I'm done. I'm, I'm not gonna waste any time here. I need to go in, have some breakfast. I'm gonna have a shower first. My PB for four miles is 38 minutes, I think, from memory, according to Garmin. But that's me absolutely going for it. That's me trying to put down a PB pace at the fastest I can run, um, with my heart rate smashed up through my head, not being able to talk, sweat pouring off me. Doing a challenge like this at a PB pace is not feasible. I might be able to do it for the first run. I might even be able to replicate it for the second run. But to do that 12 times over 48 hours is not feasible because that's what I have to do. I have to run four miles 12 times, which equates to 48 miles over two days. And I have to include eating, I have to include all the admin that goes with running like this, so making sure I've got all the gear set up, making sure I'm replenishing my energy levels, making sure that I'm showering after every run because I am in the middle of August when I'm doing this. And I have to, and this includes having to sleep as well. This includes sleep. So. I can't miss any of the deadlines. It is, what time is it? It's 12.54. So I'm about to start the one o'clock. Oh, I've lost track of what even I'm doing. I'm about to start the one o'clock run, four mile run. I'm gonna put my paraphernalia on now. I've come out a few minutes earlier. Uh, the 9 a.m. run, I ran out of the garage where my Crocs. So I'm gonna put my trainers on first before I start talking to the camera and getting all hyped up. So bear me two secs knotted up my trainers like an absolute legend so this is run number six um how do i feel i've got three minutes how do i feel i feel all right actually on the back of the last one i felt pretty bad i went indoors had some breakfast which immediately made me feel better this has made a huge difference not being have carrying my water on my back has meant i'm not dehydrated right halfway let's get this done See you on the other side. Soon this is done, I've got less to do than I've already done. That's always a good feeling. But I do feel much better having eaten. So, yeah.
there. That is the halfway run completed. I am now exactly halfway. Every run I do now is gonna be one step closer to stopping this ordeal. But that run actually felt really good. I've gotta be honest, that was probably the best run I've done, including the first one. Oh, I've got sweat in my eyes. It's really warm today. I'm gonna to have a snack. I'm gonna have peanut butter on a toasted bagel. Um, I'm gonna drink some electrolytes and then I'm gonna possibly do some editing. I'm gonna put some of the clips I've already filmed onto the computer and start pulling this video together because this is gonna be this week's video. And then the next run is five o'clock. See you then. Now I calculated I'll be burning anything between 500 and 550 calories. I massively underestimated how many calories I'm burning. Um, according to my Garmin watch, which seems pretty accurate, I'm burning between 600 and 650 with one of the runs coming in just under 700 because I, I went a little bit further than I should have. I need to be making sure that I'm replenishing. So what I'm doing is I've got some electrolytes. Do you know what the temperature is? No, I didn't. Uh, temperature today. Okay, temperature today is high as a 25 degrees. So obviously when, when you're running and, and your heart rate's up, I am sweating quite a lot. So I need to make sure I'm replenishing my electrolytes. From a calories perspective, I'm about to have lunch. I had a big breakfast. So for breakfast I had, what did I have? Porridge. Uh, two which gave me a new lease of life. And then also I'm about to eat some peanut butter bagels for lunch. So, so now that I know that I've got less to do than I've already done, that feels really good. I've got, obviously... Right, you're halfway, you've got the same to do. Not less, the same. You've done six, have you? Yeah, so... so you've got six more to go. Yeah, so that's the... What time is it? What's the next one? Five o'clock? Yeah. Nine o'clock? 1 a.m., 5 a.m., 9 a.m., 1 p.m., 6. I've got the same to do. <laughs> Tracy just burst my bubble. Psychologically, I felt really good then. So I've got six left to do. Uh, so I've got the same. I've got the same again, guys. I'm exactly halfway. I'm exactly halfway, um, which after I've done the next one, I'm going to feel 10 times better because then I've got less to do than I've already done. That's where I am. Halfway. All I did for the two days where I was running, in between each run, I would eat something, but I made sure that I was eating my breakfast, my lunch, and my dinner at the normal times. Well, as normal as I can be in between the runs. And I made sure that when I was eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, they were at the end of the previous run and at least two or three hours before the start of the next run. Oh, where's my clock? It is almost five o'clock. That means one thing, and that means it is time to run another four miles. Bit of an update, bit of a sit rep. Um, this breaks, these breaks in between each run are starting to take its toll. The running itself, obviously, is causing it, but I'm seizing up in between. I'm trying to do things, I'm trying to stretch, um, but ultimately, you know, I'm trying not to be on my feet. So then when I do run, I feel a little bit more fresh and it's causing me to seize up. So my legs are feeling really stiff now. Um, my toenails are starting to hurt. <laughs> This is the reason I like running at one o'clock in the morning. I don't like running at one o'clock in the morning. Nobody does. But I also don't like having to run on busy roads. That's two miles. I'm heading back. I'm trying to think of something inspirational to say. Uh, but I was discussing it with Tracy after my last run when I was having lunch. And I just said that luckily for me, physically my body has entered the phase where it's just an endurance mode. This is good ultramarathon training because this is exactly the type of pace I want to be doing in the second half of the Thames Path in September. I just want to get back. I'm going to have dinner, eat some food, and then just relax before I go again at nine o'clock. What I did find really tough was the three hours I had in between at the end of the run. So when I did a run, obviously, the more, the more runs I did, the further I got into this challenge, the slower I was getting. I mean, I'm not a fast runner to begin with. I'm not really an advice channel. I'm a channel where I just document my fitness journey. 
So the only tip I would give, having said that, the only tip I would give anyone that's thinking about doing a challenge like this is don't think about pace, speed, finishing times. They are what they are. For me, the challenge in this was to, it was the repetitive running and it was the recovery in between. Three hours and 15 minutes is not recovery. It's not enough time to do anything, let alone recover. Four miles is one of those distances where it's easy. Obviously it's easy when you're fresh, but it's just hard enough when you're tired. Obviously multiple four miles over such a short space of time is uh, an ordeal. It's an endurance event. Life can be so complicated sometimes. Life is all about making choices and there could be a million different variables that you can take that will lead to different outcomes. But at one o'clock in the morning, or probably 5 a.m. in the morning, where I need to go and do another four miles, life is broken down into the most basic of decisions. To roll back over and go to sleep, or get up, get my trainers on, and go. There is no multiple choice. There's a million excuses I could come up with. But what it boils down to, if I do decide to roll over and go back to sleep, what it will boil down to is quitting. Even though every fibre in my being is screaming at me to stop. Guys, that was run number seven complete. I have now been running for over 24 hours and the good news is I've now got less to do than I've already done I've got five runs left the next run is at 9 p.m. I'm gonna go indoors now and have something to eat I'm gonna rest I'm not gonna try I'm not gonna sleep okay guys so this is run number eight it's 9 p.m. let me show you my clock well it's five to nine we're gonna do this nine o'clock this is run number eight after this I'll have four left I have with me Give me a wave, Scarly. Have my youngest with me, who's conceded to come out for a slow jog with her dad, which I really appreciate. And we're gonna run through the fields in the dark. How far have we run? How far? Yeah. In kilometers or miles? Kilometers. What's your watch? Kilometers. Your watch is in kilometers, so it's 6.43 for four miles. What are we on now? 1.41. So we pretty much got 5K left, which is park run. Easy. Scarlet's um, reached her limit. We are two and a half miles in, so a mile and a half from home, and we have to walk now. It's the first time I've walked, but Scarlet's struggling. And I'd much rather her come out and try her best with me, then me push her, so as I get a good time, and then she never want to do it again. Good girl, good running. Let's do this. We've only got a mile and a half, that's it. Okay guys, right, I'm back. That run's taken us over 50 minutes. Scarlett stopped a few times, but she was brilliant. She was a beast, so she powered through as best she can. I said on camera when we were running, I'd rather take the short breaks, slow walks, then push her and force her to hate running because the only experiences she's had with me is me beasting her around a park run or you know, forcing her out at 10 o'clock at night. Hopefully, wanna do it again with me, knowing that I'm gonna be understanding if she struggles. Probably doesn't help also that we only ate dinner about three hours ago, so we didn't really have time to digest it before I went out and did a run. But anyway, that is run number eight complete, another four miles under my belt. The next run is 1 a.m. I'm not fussed about beating other people, mainly because I'm not very fast. Again, shock. But I love challenging myself to be better than I was before. And this is what this challenge gave me. It gave me the ability to take just a run, a normal run, a four mile run, which I could do in my sleep, literally, because I was very tired. And it changed it. It changed a training run into a challenge, which just gave me that competitive edge and inspired me to keep wanting to do more of it. So from that perspective, this challenge was really, really good. Hi guys, this is run number eight, eight nine it is 1 a.m or two minutes to one because there'll be someone watching who says oh, it's not 1 a.m by the time i finished messing about with camera and got out the door it will be 1 a.m so i want to go on the dot because i want to get back so i can go back to bed um okay right four miles simple as that no messing about i've got nothing else to add 
I'm not taking the GoPro. I'm just going to go and do the run. It's pitch black out there and you can't see anything anyway. So see you in four miles. That is the 1am run done. Thank God. That was the worst run I've had so far by, by miles. Literally the worst run. My legs were like jelly. My legs just, just wouldn't work. They were like lead weights. I'm going to have some electrolytes now. Um, shower, because I still have three more. I have the 5 a.m., 9 a.m., 1 p.m. So guys, good morning. Time is exactly 5 a.m. I need to get a shuffle on, so no long speech to camera. Let's do this, four miles. The sun's coming up. It's gonna be bright in about 20 minutes. These videos are getting less and less insightful. Uh, I'm not sure what to add. I've just got brain fog. I'm gonna have some breakfast now. I'm gonna have a shower first. Next one is 9 a.m. I, I should be saying motivational, inspirational stuff at this point. I'm just getting it done. I've got nothing else to add, guys. It is 8.58, so I have two minutes to go until I need to leave. This is the penultimate run, the second to last run i've only got to do four miles i say i've only got to do four miles i've only had to do four miles for the last 10 runs this is run number 11 i just want to get this done now four miles how do i feel how do i feel i feel like i've just done almost two days of running four miles every four hours that's how i feel <laughs> The fastest I can go now. This now feels ludicrously slow. Yeah, that was my penultimate run finished. That's run number 11, done and dusted, four miles. That was a tough gig. It's sweltering hot out there, really, really warm. Um, I'm gonna have a shower and then I'm gonna have something to eat again and I'm just gonna relax until one o'clock. And then that's my last run. And I think Tracy's coming with me, so I'm looking forward to that. Right, see you then. And I enjoyed it because it was a backyard challenge, meaning that I was able to set up base in my house and everything I did was, was in the streets around where I live, which I really enjoyed. I'm now at the end of four miles of running every four hours for 48 hours. This is now officially the last run. This is the last time I can get four miles in before the 48 hours is up. This is run number 12, four miles. And I also have with me this speed demon, Tracy's coming with me. She is going to keep me honest and try and pull me around. So, speed demon, you're going to be pulling me around, I think, four miles. <laughs> Doubt it very much. Oh, you've got to start your watch. Yeah. Okay. All right, have you started it? I have now. You've got it. All right, four miles. Let's do this. You've got to say, let's do this. 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 Why are we doing this? Oh, I don't know. Train, quick. Oh, I missed it. I missed the train. Four miles, 48 miles, four miles every four hours for 48 hours. I'm gonna go and eat my body weight in, in uh, bagels and peanut butter. Right, that's it. I've got no more to add because I need to have a shower and then I'll, uh, I'll do a recap when I'm fresh. Cheers guys, see you in a bit. Okay guys, it is the day after the day before. So yeah, it's the next day, I've just woken up, I've had a shower, how do I feel? So I'll start with the obvious stuff. Um, my legs, my legs feel fine. I mean, when I woke up this morning, they were a little stiff. Um, they've loosened up now because I've been pottering around, having breakfast, had a shower, got dressed. So they've kind of loosened up a bit. They feel all right now. I actually managed to get about eight hours sleep last night. I didn't feel as bad as I thought I would. I thought I'd be completely kiboshed and I wasn't. I spent the afternoon just pretty much eating mainly. I was really hungry. Obviously I burnt loads of calories. So I tried to get some sleep, especially after the 1 a.m and 5 a.m. run, I tried to get some sleep in between. I think I got an hour. I had to kind of force myself to try and get like a cat nap, which is all it was, and then my alarm would go off and I'd have to go again at 5 a.m. I was using the garage door here, so as I didn't try, I was trying not to disturb my family 
Um, even though it didn't work, they all complained the next morning when they all got up that they could hear me stamping around. So as a tip to anybody looking to do this, it being frictionless is definitely the key here, making life easy for yourself, psychologically as well as physically. I didn't go back to sleep during the day, so I spent the breaks in between the runs resting, so I wasn't on my feet, but I was editing. And then the other thing on hindsight, if I was to do this challenge again, which I might do, because it was actually a really good challenge, it had all of the aspects of this being a really, really hard challenge that I needed to overcome. It had everything involved. It was perfect for ultra training, which is ultimately why I did this, because I have a 100K ultra marathon coming up in September. It had sleep deprivation. It had fatigue. It had the challenge of admin. It had everything I needed it to have for it to be a good training challenge for the Thames Path Challenge. There's a lot of challenges in that sentence. My point is, perfect. Perfect for me. Please, I've done it. Will I do it again? 100%. I think, I think this is a challenge which, you know, I'd come back to in the future. I'm not doing it next week. Probably won't even do it next year. But I will come back to this as a challenge. I've got loads of other things like this I've got planned. I've got loads of things bubbling that I'd like to give a go. I want to say thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like and subscribe because that means a lot. Leave me a comment down below. See you guys, see all of you in the next video. Thanks for watching.